he was going to make one change, but in fact he's made two or three. And the most significant is that he's brought back Vitor Baia after a month of injury. Not only did they lose their coach after the Champions League final, they lost five players, mostly defenders, but they bought new players in all areas. Brazilians like Diego, Luis Fabiano and Setiades of uh, Greece. But a player who has done most to rescue a faltering season is the South African Benny McCarthy. He's got some crucial goals in the last few weeks, which has turned a bad season down into a good one. On to Cal, let's just check quickly. So the Onse Caldas side, not many household names here, but uh, they all acknowledge, without exception, that this is the biggest game of their lives. They too have reshaped after the Copa Libertadores win over Boca Juniors in July. Newcomers here include Cambindo, number six at the back, Denigris, a Mexican international up front, and uh, Fabro, an Argentine, has been promoted from the ranks into midfield because other players have gone. So it's a new look side in many ways, and that applies to both teams. And here's one hero of their Copa Libertadores fight. Juan Carlos Henao saved two penalties in the penalty shootout against Boca Juniors. And we're away. The last hurrah of the Toyota Cup before the FIFA Club World Championship takes over here next year. As usual, competing here for the Toyota Cup, which has been running since 1981, and the Intercontinental Trophy, which was launched in 1960 but fell into disrepute. FC Porto and Once Caldas, neither of them really in the top level economically or historically of their continents, but there's no arguing with results. Both exceptionally successful and both have rebuilt since winning their club titles. The current score in the 24 Toyota Cup so far is 12 to Europe, 12 to South America. So on the 12th day of the 12th month, we're trying to de decide who's going to make it 13. So this is an exceptional day in the Toyota Cup history, but a memorable one for these two clubs. Now, Diego, the Brazilian, out here to Cetaridis, the Greek international who did so well in Euro 2004 for the nation who won it. George Costa, the captain, down here for Luis Fabiano, the Brazilian. A foul there on Luis Fabiano by Arango. Now, Enao is going to be tested for the first time. And let's see who the Portuguese will bring up. George Costa's up there, he scored a goal just recently, got sent off in the same game. So, some big guys in there. Costinha's up there at the back. It's interesting that all players except Denigris are in a defensive position for Once Caldas. It's going to be taken by Diego. This is trouble here in the early moments for the Colombians. Hooked back out wide and not a chance at all, although there was indeed a bit of space for Manny. He cracks a smile there, not known necessarily for his great goals, although he did have a, a marvellous hit against Manchester United in the Champions League from a long distance, which is pretty memorable. That one, not so. Knocking it around is quite important. It was somewhat surprising that FC Porter came out here and warmed up for quite a long time on this wet pitch, which was understandable, but Once Caldas didn't come out at all. They did all their warming up inside, which is unusual. They're playing on a wet, slippery pitch. When they trained here last night, it was dry, totally different conditions. They've got to be careful they don't get caught out by that. They've conceded here. So Fabiano is repaired for the moment. We've got Dele on the goalkeeper into the area. Oh, it's a bad one. It is stuck in by Benny McCarthy. And the flag 
is up and the whistle has gone for offside and I don't think Mr McCarthy agrees with that but nevertheless the kick has been taken well let's see not when the ball was kicked but after it's deflected possibly now he's possibly offside but it's very close bit unlucky there Diego to McCarthy and here comes Manish well comfortable save from Manal good shot from Manish or as his Spanish coach calls him Maniche swerving but no danger keep knocking it around until you get under a bit of an opening hard one for Luis Fabiano well they get a throw in the next Ronaldo they say including Ronaldo but he's a long way off that yet here's Ceteridis with the throw Oh, and here's a good, good effort. Oh, that was terrific by Luis Fabiano. Terrific turn, control, and hit the bar. Goalkeeper didn't know anything about it. Well, that really was something like a Ronaldo. Marvellous piece of play. Still, they come forward. And a little touch almost got another one but not quite strong enough to be there now that guy's been so dangerous in a minute well here's the first one terrific turn with his chest hits it off the bar goalkeeper didn't know anything about it great play Manish working hard for Setaridis good play still going Luis Fabiano. Luis Fabiano does well. It's a great cross. Oh, that was an opening for Dele. He's not the biggest player in the world. Had that been Benny McCarthy, and that would have been in the back of the net. Great play by the Brazilian Luis Fabiano. Terrific cross, and that should have been a goal. Now, Ricardo Costa. Manish trying to work a little bit of magic between them, but they're not getting past the, the black shirts. Los Albos, as they call them, the, the whites, but now they're in black. And they're causing Porto a few problems. Dele, almost caught, does well to control it. Manish to Ricardo Costa, and that's a good challenge. Oh, no, the referee didn't like it. They specialise in those sliding challenges. He's surprised by that decision. Viafra thought he got the ball legally, but man as well. So it's a free kick. Ceteridis comes up over the far side. He's not going to be involved. Luis... Fabiano's done well in the air so far. Costinha's in there too. It's a big deep one. Oh, it's put in off the bar, over the top. Could you believe it? How did that happen? It looked like three goals there, and in the end, there wasn't one. Now there are complaints. The referee has blown the whistle. For what? Now, Diego's kick. How did this not go in? Off the post, Dele couldn't get it, and then I think it was McCarthy who put it way over the top. A flick by nobody, nobody touched it. Off the post, Dele blocked, and then McCarthy. Well, no foul. Soto, nice one to Fabro. On the right hand side goes Viafra. Viafra's in a good position here. John Viafra can have a go. Off target, good chance for Onse Caldas, possibly their best. 
Good sweeping counter-attack. Nice ball from the Argentine Fabro to John Viafra, but he snatched at it and Vito Bayer not tested. Dele. And here's Manish. And Luis Fabiano. Nice idea. Manish has been in the middle of most of the good things. And that back heel didn't quite come off. Who's he going to go to? Well, a black shirted defender, but they get a corner. Still danger here for Anse Caldas. They've looked a little bit wobbly with these balls in the air. They've got away with it. McCarthy coming to the near post. Good challenge there by Denigris. And the whistle goes for the end of the first half with Manish looking a little bit rueful because they know that FC Porto should have been in the lead. What can they produce in this second half? Biafra trying to change it towards Soto. Easy one, though, for Setaridis. They've won it back again. Ambitious. Thundered away by George Costa. Luis Fabiano. It's not a bad ball, but it's a good bit of positional play there by uh, Rojas. Viafra. Trying to pick out that one lone forward, and it's usually pretty hopeless against three defenders. Ricardo Costa to Manish. Derlei, not a great return. Still going, and now Manish! Should never have got there, but uh, he was almost in on goal. Well, a moment of excitement. One person not here to enjoy it as perhaps he would like to be as the president of FC Porto, Jorge Nuno Pinto da Costa, who's facing a series of uh, very serious charges, among them bribing referees. McCarthy misses out. Still with Porto. Good play by Diego. Great stuff. Manish. Derlei tried to lob it over the top. Manish coming again. This is more like it. Good save, but the whistle had already gone. Now that was play at pace by Porto, and it almost brought them dividends. That's much better. That wasn't a good ball from Dele, but this was pretty good stuff by Manish. Why was that blown up by the referee? No idea. Well done by Manish, but he was whacked late. Good leap. And here comes McCarthy. Offside again. Not again. Can you believe it? But he's quite right. But nothing is going for the South African star. The shot by Diego. Well, was it? Probably not. So again, he's dreadfully unlucky. Now Manish to McCarthy. Having to come a long way out to get possession. Now, Costa, better, McCarthy. McCarthy drives. Oh, great effort. What does Benny McCarthy have to do to get that ball into the net legally? Terrific bit of play. Frustration as he comes out wide to try and get possession. Hits it cleanly. And Al couldn't get there. And he was saved by the bar. Brilliant strike. And if he gets the MVP or player of the match, he says the tournament, uh, the championship trophy might go back to Europe, but the car is going to Africa. Diego, good run. No foul.
but we will have a corner. And Carlos Alberto is about to come on. A little bit more power down that flank too, but there's danger here for Onsi Caldas from these crosses. It's never been very secure. Oh, what a good save by Juan Carlos Hinao. That was brilliant. But Ricardo Costa got up there very powerfully and the goalkeeper was equal to it. Now's the time when players start to get a little bit tired. Can we get Quaresma into the game up front with his trickery? Got to get through this pack defence first though. Heavy midfield and they... Oh, Diego's got it. Carlos Alberto. Now, Manish again. Oh, deflected and over. It won't go in. Now, after that, you've been in luck. That deflection would have taken it into the net rather than over the top. But it's Manish, who's certainly firing on all cylinders. Who can pinch it in the last few seconds? Well, not with four passes like that. They've run out of ideas. Porto are looking leg-weary. And indeed, so are Anse Caldas here. Manish is still going to go strong. This is Diego. Diego, good run. Quaresma. Good one. And the save. McCarthy again denied. That seemed to be on target, and a reaction from Henao kept him out. But it's not clear yet. Now Henao chases this. And we've had 90 minutes, we're going to have three minutes of added time. So it could yet be resolved. Carlos Alberto. Quaresma. Good play. Brilliant play by the Harry Potter of Portuguese football. He's got them into a good position here. They can win it. They're all pushed up, all the big guys. Ricardo Costa, George Costa, Pedro Emmanuel stayed back. A bit of plotting there by Manish, Diego and Quaresma. There's going to be problems here for Anse Caldas, all back in defence. Poor one. Two poor ones. A corner, though, so I suppose there's something positive gained from it by Porto. Still the big guys up there. Goalkeeper backtracking. Another corner as it ticks away towards extra time. Can somebody pinch it in the last seconds? Costinha coming in from the back. Quaresma. Manish. Cetaridis and De Diego. Spectacular by Benny McCarthy, but the referee had gone for dangerous play, indirect free kick. Well, the coach, either coach, has seen possibly this game drifting into extra time when either of them could have won it. And there is the final whistle of the 90 minutes. Somehow, frustratingly, we've had no goals and we're going to have two 15-minute periods of extra time. Ponce keeper had a belter, though. First up for FC Porto, the young Brazilian, Diego. Now this is a 
the guy who scored, who saved plenty in the past, trying to psych out the 19-year-old. Another great one. Very cool. Oh, there's some trouble here. And a card being showed to Diego. Now, he's already been booked once, so that means he gets a red card. Now, we've not seen this before. We've certainly not seen it before in the Toyota Cup. His gesture towards the goalkeeper was such that the referee booked him, and he is off but he has scored a penalty it counts now then early alcazar against nuno good kick does well salutes the crowd and puts pressure on the Next, Porto player, the 20-year-old. His birthday was yesterday. Can he celebrate it here? Goalkeeper got his hand to it, but there wasn't enough. Two rounds, 2-2, two -two, no misses. Unlucky. Next up for... Once Caldas is John Viafra, the guy who scored such critical goals during the course of the World Cup, but he actually missed a penalty in the final against Boca Juniors. Oh, he didn't miss that one. Wow, that was some penalty. It's Ricardo Quaresma. What a difficult moment for these players. Again, he got his hand to it, but he didn't quite manage to save it. So, we've had six penalties. We've had six successes, and we're getting nowhere, except to a very dramatic finale. Now, this might be a difficult one, because this is... Uh, Antonio De Negris, who really has had not had a decent shot on target the whole of this long, long match. And he hasn't looked confident in front of goal. Will he score here, the Mexican? Oh, it looks good. That was excellent. Once the have had four attempts, they've scored four goals. And De Negris celebrates with his goalkeeper if they could just Save one here, they're going to make it. And here comes Manish. Manish really has got to get this. If he doesn't, he puts his side under enormous pressure. He's had such a marvellous game too. Manish against Hanau. There's no justice. The guy has played so well. But he's missed. If this penalty goes in, it's five out of five, and they can't be caught, and it's Fabro, Jonathan Fabro, the Argentine, who can make history and make it a perfect score for Once Caldas of Manizales. He missed! Well, now we really have had drama. What rotten luck for Jonathan Fabro, indeed, for also Manish. Fabro could have won it for his adopted colleagues, but now Benny McCarthy can lose it. He's had a good game too. It would be so cruel if it didn't work for him. He's got a score. He has. Well done. Cool, that's coolness under pressure. 
So now we're 4 4, and we keep going. It's sudden death now. Ruben Velasquez, defensive midfield player, 28 years of age. He's got to do it and put that pressure onto the opposition. He has. And he celebrates towards the Colombian supporters behind that goal. Costinha, the very experienced, highly talented defensive midfielder of Porto, has to score. Again, he's such a good player, it will be terrible for him to have that indignity of losing the cup, the title. Costinha. Oh, my goodness me, again the goalkeeper got his hand to it, but it's level again, 5-5. Five, five. Back again for Anse Caldas and the 25-year-old substitute, Jeffrey Diaz. Who also took penalties during the Copa Libertadores. Can put pressure again on Porto. Great kick. Tremendous confidence. It looked as if they practiced him a long time, and indeed, some would feel that this has all been part of Onse Caldas's strategy. In reply for FC Porto, George Costa, their captain who has scored a few crucial goals in his distinguished career. 50 caps for Port uh, Portugal, stopped playing for the national side after Euro 2004. But if he doesn't score here, he's going to lose this trophy and title for his side. Costa must score. So cool. So cool. 6-6. Six, six. Now we are getting into the record books as far as the Toyota Cup is concerned. We've never gone as far as this in penalties. Catania, the defender. Wow, he seemed to stub that one, but he stubbed it into the net. And Nuno didn't get anywhere near it. So he was a little bit unlucky to be dropped from the starting lineup. But he gets full revenge there. 7 6. The assistant referee urging uh, the players to get back to their starting position because now it's Ricardo Costa to win or lose it for Porto. Very good. Very good indeed. Unbelievable tension when you know that if you don't get it right, you've made history for somebody else. No fun at all. Now we're getting down into the realms of fantasy. We've got defenders taking penalties who don't normally get anywhere near this level of the opposition's goal. This is uh, Garcia for Once Caldas. Oh, he's missed! And Carlos Alberto rushed off the line thinking that they'd won the cup, but they haven't. They only win it if the next guy scores, which would then make it 8 7 to FC Porto. So. The whole fortune of this event has changed, twisted and turned, whereas Fabro could have won it for Onsa Caldas. Now, Pedro Emmanuel, the defender, can win it for FC Porto. He has! By eight... Penalties to seven. FC Porto have won the Toyota Cup for the second time. 
and Once Caldas from Manizales, Colombia are distraught.